44 Saturday bus driver gets that right. 62 of them say that at least twice a week they have pedestrian walk on front of their bus. All of us use a crosswalk on a daily basis. Many of you probably use a crosswalk on your way to this class this morning. The question is, did you wait at the crosswalk? Not only do I use a crosswalk on a daily basis, I also have been a Sirite employee for the past two years, where I've had both experiences and even stopped my bus to avoid hitting the pedestrian as being that pedestrian walking out in front of a bus. Sirite should implicate an incentive for students to wait at crosswalks by August of 2030. The problem of students not checking before stepping into a crosswalk not only puts themselves in danger, but it poses risk on the bus drivers. A problem that I think that can be that can be solved with Skyway. Students at Iowa State run the risk of putting themselves in danger when they don't wait before going into a crosswalk. This also puts unnecessary stress on bus drivers that can lead to different physical and mental problems. In 2015, Mark Schneider, a Plattsburgh personal injury attorney, said that of the 14,000 bus-related accidents that happened that resulted in an injury, 257 of those resulted in a fatality. The average center ride bus is about 50, 40 feet in length and weighs about 25,000 pounds when it's not full. The average speed on Lincoln Way is about 30 miles per hour, but when we're taking a turn, we're supposed to take that turn between 10 and 15 miles an hour. Now imagine getting hit by that, a 25,000 pound bus at 10 miles an hour. On December 14th, 2015, Emily Jacobs never imagined this would ever happen to her, but it did. She was on her way to her first final as a business student, as a freshman at Iowa State when she was struck by a siren bus and she didn't make it. I didn't bring up this accident to point fingers. I brought it up to show the severity of what getting hit by a bus looks like. In a study done in 2016, more than 80% of bus drivers experience varying amounts of stress. These varying amounts of stress can lead to different physical and mental problems. I want you to imagine again that you're driving a 35,000 pound bus with 60 chatty khakis on board and someone decides to just walk out in front of your bus without checking both ways. You now have less than two seconds to bring that 35,000 pound bus to a complete stop for hitting that pedestrian. With a quick slam on the brakes, you stop the bus. But in the meantime, you've given those 60 Chatty Cathy's whiplash, turning them into negative Nancy's. Not pleasant. As you're bringing the bus to a stop, your heart is beating out of your chest, like mine is right now giving this speech. Compare it to when you guys are giving your speech and you're nervous. Now, Maj Campier, professor at the University of Nij Nijmegen, <coughs> studied occupational stress and stress prevention in 1966 and found that 52% of bus drivers said that the main reason they would leave their job was an overload of stress. She then later says that this stress leads to different cardiovascular problems as well as high blood pressure. The effects of pedestrians not waiting before going into a crosswalk puts themselves in danger um, and poses high repercussions. But these repercussions, people think that can be solved with more training. Many people believe that more training is the simple solution. Fisher and Talwar, last Los Angeles personal injury attorney, said in 2014 that the main reason behind bus accident statistics is inadequate training. After looking at numerous training requirements for different school districts and cities, the majority of them say that as long as the employer provides enough training for them to fill their job description, that's enough. So there's not really one set of definitions that defines adequate training. This shows that there isn't. In, for example, in 2015, Alex Connor, an Iowa State Daily writer, said that Saturday bus drivers go between 100 to 150 hours of driving the bus with a trainer. Me, going through 125 hours of training, I know that they teach you the ins and outs of what being a bus driver looks like and the mentality that you're supposed to have while driving your bus. During this training, they teach you how to see that pedestrian who is gonna wait at the crosswalk, or that bike who's gonna to try to pass you when you're trying to turn left, and how to prevent those accidents. But wouldn't that be nice if there was another way of preventing these accidents from happening? Skyway is the solution to this problem. It will work similar to Pocket Points, a college app used by many students at Iowa State University. Pocket Points reward students with discounts at different stores and restaurants by keeping them off their phones during class. Pocket Points uses GPS to track if students are actually on campus, and it does this by having the university upload 
the college campus to Pocket Points, and the university tells Pocket Points where all of the possible classes are in <coughs> the Points Walk class. Once it verifies that you're on campus, you simply just click the class option, lock it, and put it in your pocket, and you're good to go. Lloyd Eric, Pocket Points head of customer support, said about a week ago that for every 10 minutes the phone is locked, it generates one point. Sideway will work similar to this, where it will track if you're on campus, more specifically if you're at a crosswalk, and even more specifically, crosswalks that are used by SciRide. Another way of Sideway that will work is the longer you wait at that crosswalk, the more points that will be generated. So if you wait there for three seconds, you'll get two points. And for each additional second you wait there, you will get an additional point. Sideway will also use a technology called NextBus, which is a satellite approved technology, it uses it to track where the buses are on campus at all times. So if you wait at a crosswalk and there's no satellite bus, you get more points. You get two points for every second you wait there because it, per, it trains your brain to just wait at a crosswalk even though there's not a bus. Sideway will help keep its users out of harm's way for two main reasons. In 2018, Andrew Sharp, content manager for the Illinois Legal Aid Online, says that, says that if a pedestrian is simply waiting at the curb, it does not give him the right of way to cross. Cars aren't required to stop. And in 2017, Jason Deter, writer for the Globe and Mail, quotes the use of highway and rules of regulation when it says that if a pedestrian is using the crosswalk, then cars are required to stop. Now these two rules of the road prove that because a pedestrian is waiting at a crosswalk, it doesn't give them the right of way to walk out. But it shows that since they're waiting at the crosswalk, they can look both left and right to see if it's safe for them to cross. Sadly, the technology that we have in today's world doesn't allow to track whether or not students are waiting at crosswalks. But this technology should be available in the next 10 years. In conclusion, SciRite should implicate an incentive for students to wait at crosswalks by August of 2030. Today we talked about the problem of students not waiting at crosswalks and the danger it puts them in, the unnecessary stress it puts on bus drivers, we talked about a couple solutions, and then we talked about my solution. Since we all have to wait for Sideway, I urge all of you to take those two to three extra seconds out of your day to wait at that crosswalk and not get hit. Thank you.